Hey guys, welcome to Functional Print Friday. If you like design and using 3D printing to solve real world problems and not just printing trinkets, this channel's for you. So what I've got on the bench this week is a UV curing chamber that I designed and built a few years ago. And I do feature mostly FDM printing on this channel, but I do have a resin printer and I do use resin printing in many of my projects. Uh, and when, back when I got my resin printer, uh, I wasn't happy with any of the options uh, on the market for UV curing chamber. A lot of folks were using just a really big like uh, UV floodlight or uh, like a nail curing light. And none of these seemed like a good option. I wanted a nice, you know, solid metal housing, um, you know, a timer so that I could walk away uh, with a preset amount of time. Um, and something that was, you know, fully enclosed so that I didn't have exposure to the UV light uh, elsewhere around in my work area. Uh, and this is what I designed and built, and there's a lot of FDM printed parts on this. In fact, uh, I featured the, the Prusa Galaxy Black uh, filament in a print that I did last week. Uh, if you haven't seen that, go check it out uh, for trays and a jewelry box. I used the same filament uh, for the control panel uh, up top here. This is designed to fit on top of this specific box, but really you could take this and mount it on any enclosure, even if you've already got one, or you could use this uh, with the timer board inside for other applications as well. This entire thing is FDM printed, including the, uh, the buttons that actuate the circuit board inside. So let's go ahead and flip this guy on. In fact, let me move the camera up and get you a better angle. Okay, so that's a much better view. Now we can see the display a lot clearer, and hopefully you guys can see the control interface here. So. Now that we're switched on, you can see we have a lighted button here and I chose purple uh, for this button just because it was close to the, the type of light that this outputs um, uh, from a color perspective at least. And you can see the three buttons that we have here. And this is the time displayed in number of seconds that this guy is gonna run. So if I push this button, you'll hear a relay click and this will start counting down. So I have it set to five minutes, which is plenty for most prints. But if we turn this off, turn it back on and reset it. Uh, we can adjust this to anything we like. So if I wanted to do, say, let's do 10 minutes. I'll put this up to six, lock that in. Now that's gonna count down from 10 minutes in, again, in number of seconds. So fairly easy to use interface, and this is based on a commonly available uh, timer board. I'll link all the stuff that you need uh, down in the description below. Uh, and it'll be on my site, fpfdesigns.com uh, as well. But you can kind of see how things are gonna line up here now. So you can see we have the display and then we have uh, these plastic uh, buttons that run down through, which are uh, printed in just a different color of PLA. Go down and actually contact the micro switches on the control board. And there's the relay that you can hear clicking. Uh, and I'll include a wiring diagram of how this all goes together as well. But Rich, what's inside the box, right? Okay, well, let me move the camera again and I'll show you inside. Okay, so if I open this guy up, you can see what we have inside is one of these uh, turntables that actually rotates with the solar panels, the, I should say, the electricity generated by the, the solar panels uh, on the four sides. And that ensures that our print is getting evenly saturated with that UV light. And speaking of that UV light, uh, this is 60 watts of uh, UV strip lighting in here, self-adhesive, uh, stuck to the inside of this metal cabinet. Um, and this metal cabinet is from Ikea, by the way. I'll link to this as well. I think it's this in their Lix Holt line. They've got a couple different uh, sizes of these steel cabinets available, and they are a great value. Um, and I don't know if you can see it here. Let me shift it over a bit. Uh, all of the surfaces inside, the top, uh, the two sides have LED lighting. The door itself has aluminum reflective tape on it. That's this stuff here, uh, available from 3M. Again, I'll, I'll link all this stuff down below. Um, and then of course the bottom doesn't have UV lighting, but with the, the base raising this up and having lighting below where the print is, we're pretty much ensuring that we're saturating all of that print. Okay, so let's get this turned off. Um, so I can give you kind of a better idea of what things look like inside. And I'll probably just get the camera off the tripod for that. Okay, here's a better look inside the chamber. You can see we have light on basically all sides, including the, uh, the top. And you can see how I have the uh, various pieces of strip lighting um, just wired uh, together uh, in a series, in a long series. 
All right, let's go take a look at what the design for this looks like in, uh, in 3D, and I can show you what the inside of this control panel looks like and how everything fits together in here. Okay, so here's the first part to the design for this, and it was really a joy to open this up and be reminded of the mental process that I went through when designing the components for this UV curing chamber. Uh, one of the mistakes that a lot of beginners will make in 3D modeling is if they're trying to incorporate some you know, pre-existing physical component that's not going to be 3D printed into their 3D prints, um, it's just trying to measure that and you know, roughly you know, figure out where to make the placement of items within their 3D print for it to fit. Uh, what you want to do is model the component uh, that you're going to be using in your 3D print first. And that's what I did here. Now, I didn't model the whole thing. This is that timer board. You can see I didn't model the relay or any of the contacts or other circuitry, but I modeled the, the, the parts of it that I need to, to interface with in my design. Uh, and that would be the top of the three micro switches to program it, the location of the mounting holes, the thickness of the board, um, and the location and height of the LED display on that timer board. Then once you've got that, it's a lot easier to try and model around that um, with your 3D printed part. So again, this is the timer board down here. This is the part that's going to be 3D printed. You can see that gives me very easily the ability to determine my standoff height, um, incorporating a small gap between the top of the LED screen and the chamber down into that. Um, the location of the holes for my actuation buttons. Um, as well as just the overall thickness, uh, you know, that I need um, for uh, my 3D printed, um, you know, control panel. In this case, I didn't model the whole top. Uh, really, I just needed the position of the chamber and these buttons uh, relative to where the standoff for where the board were going to be. Next thing I could do then, once I had that, was model the height of the buttons. These are just plastic pieces uh, that, that line up in here and push down on the tops of those micro switches. And it's actually two parts. These, this barrel here is part of the top plate and that barrel aligns this plunger here that actually pushes down on the micro switch. So it's captured in there once this is put together. Um, and you can see then once I did that, uh, I can go ahead and split these components up. These are individually printed in a different color. Um, and this is ultimately in incorporated in the, the overall like control box that sits on top. When it came to the control box, uh, I did roughly model uh, that IKEA uh, metal cabinet, and then I entertained a couple different designs uh, for the top of this. I uh, ultimately chose this one. Um, I might consider making these other ones available if you guys are interested. Uh, let me know down in the comments below. Uh, but I ultimately chose the aesthetic of this one and then went ahead and did all the rest of the modeling to actually incorporate this board. And that is this over here. You can see if I flip this over, uh, this is actually a support for the screen. The, the weird angle that this guy prints at as well as the fact that it needs to be open down here. Um, any of the slicing programs I used did not do a good job uh, supporting that. So this is just a support that essentially breaks off um, once, you're, once you've completed this. The whole thing prints facing up. So this surface down here uh, is the one that's gonna be against your bed when this is printed. You can see these are the main standoffs where we actually attach this to the steel cabinet. Um, and you can see I actually joined the barrels together just for strength uh, where those buttons go into. And then these four standoffs here uh, are where the, the board mounts to. Um, I incorporated some holes in here uh, in the stiffener so that wires could be routed through. Uh, and there's plenty of room uh, inside of this. I also added these to stiffen on the back um, and you can see everywhere else it's basically hollow, again, to maximize the space inside of here for wiring. Uh, this would be our main on-off switch here, and this is our, our start switch right here. Uh, this piece here is actually a template for the top of the steel cabinet. Um, this essentially acts as, I, I taped this down once I was satisfied with the position, uh, marked the two holes that I needed to drill for the screws that come up uh, and hold these two main standoffs on the sides, and then also uh, the hole here where the wires uh, go up to the control panel from inside that box. Uh, and then this is a grommet that goes actually in from the bottom of the, the steel cabinet uh, to protect the wires that come up through that hole that's drilled in the metal cabinet. So I think that's about it for the design on this. Um, 
you know, I, I will make all this available as I always do on my site, fpfdesigns.com, and that's linked down in the description of this video. Uh, I'll also link to all the components that I used, um, the main switch, the lighted uh, start switch, uh, that timer board. Um, I'll link again to the, uh, the Prusa filament uh, that I used, the Galaxy Black that the control panel is made out of. Um, and I'll link to the, uh, the lights as well as the, uh, the cabinet. Um, I hope you guys learned something from this, even if you don't want to make one of these. Hopefully just kind of talking through the design and, and what I had in mind uh, in making it was valuable. Uh, if it was, uh, please hit that thumbs up button and consider subscribing. I put out a new video like this every single Friday uh, that focuses on either a functional design I've come up with that serves some purpose, like the control panel uh, on this box, uh, or, or some sort of design or component that makes something else just you know better or more useful. Thanks again, guys, and I will catch you next Friday.